While there's charm in vintage watches and sort of the quirkiness of having to take care of them and just marveling at what someone was able to accomplish in let's say 1952, there's equal charm in the novelty that is the aggressive technological advancement represented in this watch. I'm not one who wears smart watches. I just haven't gotten into it yet, partly out of fear that if I put one on my wrist, I may never put a mechanical watch on again. But luckily for me, there's the next best thing. With the Seiko Astron, it has a ton of legacy in terms of uh, quartz watch history. But today, it's about as close to a smart watch as you're going to get. Historically, the Astron dates back to the late 1960s, about 1969 to be exact, and represents Seiko's first quartz watch, and as far as we can tell, the first quartz watch ever. As time has gone on and Seiko has leaned into sort of a vintage aesthetic when it comes to its dive watch line, its chronographs, and much of its automatic and mechanical watches, uh, the Astron has actually pushed forward in terms of design. Uh, its positioning has been just an entirely modern watch, an unabashedly modern watch. It's one that we've seen a lot of Seiko brand ambassadors in the sports world sort of model and, and sport themselves. But it's not one that's connected with Seiko fans. It's not one that's connected with watch fans. And it's one that I've never really understood until I got one. And I have to say, it's pretty cool. So at first glance, Seiko Astron looks like a conventional modern chronograph, but the sub-dials are not doing what a typical chronograph would do, and you're really not gonna use this watch to time things. The greater function of this piece is a travel watch, a perpetual calendar. You're gonna get all the information you need on a watch. So in the left sub-dial, what you are able to access is power reserve, standard time, daylight savings time, leap seconds. In the right sub-dial, you're gonna get your days of the week, whether you're on 24 hours or 12 hours, you're getting your AM PM indication in a smaller subdial within that subdial. And then in the lower uh, six o'clock subdial is your, your second time zone. And adding to that is it's a 430 date window, but it's still a date window. And I think that in the case of this watch, the 430 date window keeps things from being a little too messy. It doesn't get in the way of the subdials. It has a white aperture, so it pops off and you can quickly see the date at a glance. So this watch is both quartz and solar and has GPS functionality. Essentially, this flies in the face of what a mechanical watch should be. So mechanical watches are all about the mechanics, you know, the, the interior. That's why we have exhibition case backs so you can marvel at it. But this watch is about technology. When I first got this watch in for review and I opened the box, I realized I didn't know much about the Seiko Astron. I was actually pretty concerned about how I was going to set it. So I opened the box sunlight floods onto the dial, and suddenly the hands just start going crazy. Just spinning around, phantom minute hand, phantom hour hand, phantom date. Uh, and then I started to see that everything that was happening was in the interest of setting the watch perfectly to the second, to the minute, to the hour, to the date, to the time zone. The Seiko Astron will periodically receive signals from satellites. And occasionally I'm wearing this watch, and I'm looking down at my wrist, and the second hand kind of does a weird loop around the dial. And what's happening is it's receiving that signal and making sure that it is aligned perfectly with atomic time. Uh, and being able to catch that moment is about equal to any time that I've seen mechanical watches operate. For example, seeing one tenth of a second on a mechanical chronograph. It's just that quirkiness, whether it's a mechanical feat or a technological feat. They're two different things for sure but both objects are geared toward telling you the time and telling it to you accurately. And this is just a, a different version of that same idea. What's really neat about this watch too, is if you need to set it for whatever reason, if you're trying to set your second time zone, for example, and you use it to actuate the pushers, the time will stop, much like if you pulled the crown out of a mechanical watch. But when you're finished setting it, you'll watch as the second hand goes to catch up with where it should have been when you started at the beginning. So it will go back to the exact second and track accurate time, no matter what you're doing with the watch. So using and utilizing the functions will not interfere with its accuracy. And I find that to be something that shouldn't be understated. And the more and more I look at this watch, I find that it's just putting function over form in every way. So the Astron has been around in some capacity uh, in, a, in a design 
pretty similar to this, uh, though a lot more convoluted in terms of presentation for the last decade or so. Uh, Novak Djokovic famously was uh, the face of that watch before moving over to Hublot as their brand ambassador. But as recently as 2021, Seiko has slowly refreshed this line through a series of limited editions and then this regular production titanium model, which cleans up the overall presentation and lends itself to a more wearable and much lighter watch. In terms of sizing, the Seiko Astron is approximately 43 millimeters in diameter, but like all Seiko watches, that's only half the story. The lug-to-lug -lug measurement is just about 48 millimeters, which keeps it nice and compact on smaller wrists, which I'm not ashamed to say I have. Wearability-wise, you can see that it has almost an integrated bracelet 70s style sharp edge aesthetic to it, and the taper is quite nice. It actually tapers uh, so that it doesn't wear too chunky on the wrist and the titanium keeps it pretty light. I mean, you have a sapphire bezel, a sapphire crystal, titanium bracelet, titanium case. However, it does still have a pseudo futuristic look to it, almost aggressively modern. I don't know if this is a style we're not, we're just not ready for yet or we're waiting for. When we wear watches, we like people to compliment them. Have not yet received a compliment on the Astron, but I think that its features and functions outweigh its style in a lot of ways. This is a perpetual calendar, a dual time watch. There's really nothing quite like a watch that can be this accurate. Without making a sweeping generalization about cultures, I, I do think that there's something to be said about the Japanese sensibility of precision, of making something that just works without having to worry about whether it appeals to the past. But what I, what I personally love about what Seiko and Grand Seiko do is they look to the past with, let's say, case shape. They look to the past with, let's say, general profile of a watch. But they're constantly pushing the boundaries when it comes to dial texture, uh, the artistry that goes into the watches that keep them feeling fresh and not looking to the past too much. And I think the Astron, while not comparing it to a Grand Seiko dial by any stretch of the imagination, feels like it is paying homage to the past, but in a way that doesn't hamper its ability to be an entirely modern timepiece. I almost wonder with Seiko, such a vertically integrated organization, you know, and seeing such a wide breadth of design that the Astron department may not be the guys in the room who are most focused on making a quote unquote sexy watch. Although this watch feels like something that they might think was sexy when they made it. I just find it aggressive to a fault. It's very sharp lines. This integrated bracelet look on a 43 millimeter case size where the bezel is so thin and the dial is so large that I really feel like, in, in the case of this watch, which has a light gray dial, it just sort of shouts at you. And I kind of want my watches to be a little bit more low key. Now there are darker dial variants of the Astron. Maybe I should look into those. And this is not an inexpensive watch by any means. We're talking a $2,500 watch. I could personally recommend a whole host of really amazing mechanical watches in that price point from blue chip Swiss brands with Insane Legacy. However, if you stack up what those watches can do, you need to be involved in the business of keeping those watches going. Whereas with this, again, not appealing to the enthusiast for a second, this is kind of worth $2,500 if you think about it. It strikes me that having spent some time with this piece that I need to open up my own understanding of what it is that watches can do and what I'm willing to wear. Uh, and the Astron just represents maybe trying something in the watch world. So all I can say after spending time with the Seiko Astron is, Whatever watch it is that you may be on the fence about, give it a shot.